is Daily Blast Live. We're talking about what you're talking about. Real, honest, entertaining, live. DBL starts right now. Three, two. Strong opening, welcome to DBL. Hello everyone, it's Tuesday, May 18th. Good morning, all of you. Good morning, hey. what's going on? Beauty patooties. All right, I'm Tori, I'm here with Lindsay now. We hope you're having a good morning. But we do wanna talk about something that's gone all over my feed. I saw it yesterday even, UFOs. 
okay? It used to be whenever someone talked about them or people used to be snickering or not take it seriously, but something has drastically changed, especially when it comes to the government. All right, we're gonna check out this new UFO footage taken by the US Navy off the coast of Southern California in July. This is 2019. This isn't like 1944. At one point, the UFO seems to enter the water, but no wreckage was ever found at the time. Even former presidents are now talking about UFOs and taking them seriously. So check out what Barack Obama said about it last night on James Corden. When I came into office, I asked, right? I, I was like, all right, you know, is there the lab somewhere where we're keeping the uh, <laughs> alien specimens in spaceship? Uh, uh, the answer was no. Uh, so, what is true, uh, and I'm, I'm actually being serious here, is, is that uh, there are, uh, there's footage and records of objects in the skies that we don't know exactly what they are. Uh, people still take seriously trying to investigate and figure out what that is. So just because there are a lot of new UFO sightings, does that mean that aliens are real? So DBL Nation, we go to you. What do you think? Do you think aliens are visiting the Earth? Is Al one? Go to dblvote.com to weigh in. Sorry, I was waiting all morning. Lord, you've been on a roll for like two weeks. I was like, I got it. It was worth it, though. You nailed it. It just came go. right up. Um, I read a lot about this, and I listened to one Navy pilot who said four people saw they don't have wings. They don't have any steering mechanism. It's just sort of an oblong shape, and it can turn, it, it defies the laws of physics. So either they said the Chinese or the Russians have some kind of uh, technology we don't have, or this is aliens. Al? I don't, I don't know. I think, I, I think they're baby-stepping us into the you fact that there are. You think they're dribbling it out? I think that there are, and, and I always look back at like, I look at movies. You'd like, like, look at, remember Deep Impact with the asteroids? We had a black president in that, Morgan Freeman, right? And everybody's like, oh, black president. <laughs> and then the fifth element, they had Tiny Lister. I remember. Black president. And then Obama comes on, you're like, oh, I've seen this a couple of times. And then it wasn't that big of a deal. I think they're doing the same thing with aliens. They're just baby stepping it out there like, oh, tic-tac-toe. So we have aliens. They know. I, we just don't know. I think so. I think so. And Lindsay, I don't, I don't, I don't want to be right, but I, I, I don't think. I'm one of those people who are so terrified at the thought that I always just like wiped it out of my mind. Like even the intro to X-Files, I get terrified. <laughs> so I don't care about any of this, but when I keep seeing these videos and then when I watch this like couple documentaries over qu quarantine, I'm like, wait, this is too much. And I know uh, I talked to our executive producer in detail about how some of these people, they sell a good story. That's their point of doing these documentaries because they're writing a story to tell you that they're aliens, but I'm just starting to believe it. Yeah. scaring does, the crap out of me. Is it strange? You like, but Barack Obama is in a, he might be a little light, but he's not a goofy conspiracy no, guy. And he had four chances to say absolutely not in that. And he was like, yes, and not kinda, only this, maybe. Al, the yeah. Pentagon has declassified that TikTok video, for instance, that tic -tac. we're seeing. TikTok. -tac. Oh, There's I a said lot of declassified TikTok videos. I should have said TikTok, excuse me. <laughs> but the idea of them showing it, I agree, is trying to get us. We do know there's unidentified flying something. We just don't know who's in there. All right. Ooh, final vote. Here we go. 74% think aliens are visiting the Earth. Oh, wow. Where are they? Whoa. Stay away from me. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> to your right. Okay. Can you imagine being a first-time parent at 50? Naomi Campbell just announced she is a new mom with this photo on Instagram. She said, a beautiful little blessing has chosen me to be her mother. I'm so honored to have this gentle soul in my life. Naomi has talked about having kids in the past. In 2017, she told a British paper, quote, I think about having children all the time, but now with the way science is, I think I can do it when I want. So what do you think about Naomi waiting until 50 to be a new mom? And let's not forget, there are men that have been 50 having new dads, but it's biologically a little different. Now, we don't know how Naomi Campbell had the baby, if it was a surrogate, if it was adopted. We're letting you all know that. But do you think you're pregnant? Is it 50 too old? Well, it's interesting to me because Naomi Campbell's always been somebody that's career first and like, you know, she just has been this superstar. So you look at her life and you're like, when was there ever time for yeah. a kid and energy for a kid? And Barbara Walters famously talks about having a kid and having that same kind of career, like on the trajectory of Naomi Campbell and really not giving her kid the attention that she wishes she did over mm. the course of her career. So I think um, she picked the time that worked for her. And it's really awesome because I watched my sister, who was somebody who's super career focused, have a kid two years ago and watched like how gentle she became and just how um, 
much more empathetic she became just natural things that might happen with motherhood and so I look forward to those things with Naomi Campbell who seems like outside looking and she's been a real you know, hard you know what and just she like throws things right, right, she's been very direct direct and I think it's gonna soften her up a little bit so I'm excited to see what this mom Naomi Campbell looks like I mean that's I agree with you there are there's danger they call it by the way when when I go I'm 39 when I go and go to talk to the OBGYN or a gynecologist they're like oh you're geriatric which is lovely it feels great for my self-esteem yeah. <laughs> Geriatric at this point. Yeah. Geriatric. It's terrible. But there are some dangers, Al, and you know having kids and being pre-med that 50s all I mean, Janet Jackson had a baby at 52, but this is for the ultra rich who can maybe pay for it in that way. Right. And I mean it's a certain kind of lifestyle that goes along with this. And let's not just forget the day to day. Just getting up four times a night uh, for a couple months in a row. When you're 26, that's difficult. When you're in your 50s, it could be almost dangerous. You go through your day half sleep, you don't know how that's gonna re work, and we don't really have a lot of evidence for how this affects your life going forward. You also have to think, when this kid is getting ready to go to college, she'll be staring 70 in the face. But at the same time, could there be like a better landing spot for a baby? I than know, Naomi, Naomi Campbell. Campbell. <laughs> so everything <laughs> totally, is, is, totally. is pluses and minuses. We obviously wish her the best. And uh, Lindsay is talking about look, a kid will soften you. I'm like, Lindsay has a smile that will light up the room. Yeah, I don't you know don't, if yeah. you could be any more gentle. <laughs> <laughs> but it does change you. It does give you perspective. So, That's you know, good. maybe it'll change her as well. Well, Janet Jackson, a quick correction, was 50, not 52. I wanted to let everyone know. And she still looks fantastic. But again, they have help. And they didn't, like, help. the idea of a grandfather change a lot? I mean, to me, my grandfather was so old. And to me, my dad is so such a young grandfather or yeah. grandmother. So I think that if they did have a kid, my parents hopefully are never having a kid again. But if they did, you know, I would be like, okay, I think they can handle it the way they handle my niece. There you go. I wonder if when Naomi Campbell's kid starts to walk, if he or she walks like that. It won't. Okay. <laughs> In Maybe. today's <laughs> selfie-obsessed culture, sometimes things don't go quite as planned. So a woman on a bike, she's trying to take a selfie. Oh, okay. Oh, <gasps> oh dear. She wipes out. We've been there. We've all been there. It all happened in the background. Here we go. That's me right there. <laughs> of an MSNBC newscast, the woman does eventually get back up and continues on her way as if nothing happened. She meant to do it. How do y'all feel on. about that? I appreciate selfies, but like, I, I don't have the coordination to even attempt that. So a I don't know with what phone? she's thinking. Yeah. No way. Yeah, I don't know who would want to watch that except for what happened. So maybe <laughs> she actually got herself a lot more views because she can kind of cut between the two no, videos. No, Al, when you were on your workout journey and still are, you might be like sending videos to people that also worked out with you, right? Yeah, but I mean, I don't know because I, I wasn't just working out with you. A, riding a bike going on a bike. We're like, we know what that looks like. Don't post this. <laughs> I don't, I don't know why, but I, you know, people want to broadcast their their entire life. I, I saw a guy fall uh, on an electric scooter, kind of doing the same thing. He went from the, the crosswalk to the sidewalk and didn't realize there was about four inches there. Yep, hits and, it. And uh, it was the yep. best thing I saw. Me all day. too. Raise yep. your hand at home or in the studio if you kind of do laugh when they're not hurt, but people fall. Yeah, it's pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Come on, Michael Dean. I feel bad. Michael Dean does not laugh. He's the most stand-up guy in the working. studio. He, oh, okay. He was working. I apologize. <laughs> Coming up on TVL, celebrity plastic surgeons Dr. Paul Nassif and Terry Dubrow are here to tell us about the new season of Botched and their secret to the unbreakable bromance. Does it rival Jeff and Al? And how short is too short <laughs> when it comes to men's shorts? Why Milo Ventimila is defending his style choice and they're short. Coming up next. Screen time for kids has gone way up during the pandemic, but now with lockdowns slowly lifting, experts say now is the good time to make some changes. Let's connect the dots. One of the many side effects of COVID-19 is children have had more screen time, whether it's because of online learning or parents needing to distract kids while working from home. Researchers say screen time increased 50%. And while we would love to think those kids were only using devices for educational purposes, that same research showed sites like YouTube and the gaming platform Roblox saw the biggest spikes in usage. Experts warn that the effects from this change will continue much longer for kids than it would for adults. That means there won't be as stark of a difference between their online and offline worlds, since kids have now learned to go online for everything from socializing to schoolwork, screens have become a major part of their identity. So what can you do? 
Child behavior experts say now is the time to start weaning kids off the screens and reintroducing them to limits. But you can't just take the screen away, you have to replace it with something else. That means finding activities you feel comfortable doing with your child, going to a zoo, a park, something active that will engage them. And that could be good for the whole family. Welcome back to DVL. A big shout out to our co-workers. That was Kelly. How are you, Kelly? Jody, I see you there. Jeff, sometimes I see Jeff on a walk. Hi, Jody. Hi, my love. All right, guys and gals, we've got a very important conversation for you. This is serious, so let's take it down a notch. Here we go. <clears throat> it's about men in shorts. In particular, <laughs> short shorts. Yeah. It was all sparked by this. It's a photo <laughs> that went viral. This is a star Milo Ventimiglia, Mili, excuse me, wearing super short shorts after leaving the gym. He defended the look. He defended it, <laughs> saying he folds his shorts up shorter while going out to work out harder. But does it raise an interesting question? What is the appropriate length for men? Can they wear short shorts? Is mid-thigh okay? And what about those super long shorts that go below the knee? Now, even more importantly, can guys wear jean shorts or sometimes as they're called, jorts? And what about <laughs> tight shorts? Are they ever okay, okay? So what do you all think about men in shorts? And let's be honest, if we were talking about women, it's a little double standard here because we're all like laughing. But I just want to no. give it, okay. Milo shorts, are, if a girl had those on, I'd be like, come on, man. <laughs> Unroll your freaking <laughs> bathing suit bottom. Like, what is <laughs> what happening? Was that? that was too high. Like, I would say anybody, like, just calm down, wear the shorts how they are. All those three pictures of the shorts we showed are all fine to me. They're all okay. If no. guys, huh? These aren't all fine. Well, put them back up. No, so but not, no, but not Milo's shorts. Milo's. But the three pictures are, are okay. Yeah, anybody okay. can wear those. The ones in the, the one in the middle, that's YMCA. I haven't bought shorts since I haven't since gone 2001. shopping. Right. right. <laughs> Okay, the ones on the left are actually what the young kids, because I watch a lot of high school basketball highlights, that's really what the kids are wearing yeah. now, which is crazy. And the ones on the right, I feel like that's like, hey, Lindsay's having a barbecue Sunday. Um, that's what I'm going to wear. So I feel you. I feel like everyone but the one in the middle. Your pants, I mean, your shorts are going to be almost below your knee. That's what you're yeah, going to wear okay. to my barbecue? I mean, to my knee, but I'm not, first of all, I don't know. I don't like wearing shorts anyway. Well, can I ask a question? Excuse me, you have a short set. I, yeah. <laughs> you have a wrong for short set. But that's a, that's, a, that's a onesie, okay? That is a onesie. Can that I ask is a you guys a question? Look. You know the Larry Bird 1980s, like, whoa, yes. whoa, is that coming back? I think it I, feels like it. it's back. But can I ask you guys, because I could have no perspective, do you like to see a man's legs? Because he had great legs. I feel like if a guy was wearing a cutoff T-shirt, you guys would be like, oh, he's got nice arms. But he had nice legs, so why can't he highlight his legs? Maybe it's different. I just, to me, that seems like a lot of white at the top. It's a little bright. <laughs> he was sun he, he was a good-looking guy. <laughs> it doesn't do anything for me, and neither does the cutoff shirt. You but if like you're at the gym, legs? Not in particular. It doesn't like tickle my fancy or anything. <laughs> it just is I like okay, nice legs. Which like, <laughs> with my outfit. <laughs> <laughs> Let's all go have a gimlet and watch the races. We'll be right back <laughs> with doctors all massive. We will see you soon. Be right back.
Stewart pointed out to us that the vaccine companies started giving people the vaccines in trials in the summer of 2020, and that prompted them to ask us, why isn't the length of effectiveness measured from that group? Our sources are Dr. Aditi Narukar, a physician from Harvard's medical school, and Dr. Kalsar Talat, an epidemiologist from Johns Hopkins University. First, our experts say it actually is the clinical trials that we use to measure the length of effectiveness. The phase three trial that I am speaking of, the six month data that we have to date after the second shot is the cohort of 44,000 people that are part of that Pfizer trial. And then you wanna gather all the data from everybody in the trial or as many people as possible from the trial at key milestones. So far, all of the approved data collected only stretches out for six months. These trial participants have milestones where they check in and the next could be nine months. But there could be even more reliable data coming soon. Now, because so many Americans have gotten vaccinated, we likely will have real world data as well as we do for many other areas of research with the COVID vaccine. So despite the fact that some participants are approaching a year since they got their shots, the approved data from the trials takes time to analyze and it looks at a wider group of people. And that's why we can only say at this point, the vaccines are at least effective for six months. <music> Welcome back to DBL. Wouldn't it be funny if I was wearing tight shorts right now? Doctors Terry Dubrow and Paul Nassif are one of television's favorite bromances. And earlier they joined us to dish on the new season of Botched and maybe to poke a little fun at each other as well. Take a look. You got a little goiter going. Your, your oh, thyroid's right. a little swollen. Oh, is it? Yeah. I know that's not what you're here oh, for, no. but I just want to mention that to you. Okay. That's true. Despite the way he looks, Paul is actually a really smart, astute clinician. And that pickup of the thyroid is an important part of Samantha's assessment and potential future treatment. I love you guys. Welcome <laughs> back to DBL Doctors. You say it how it is. You also are both deep into the Real Housewives as insiders. So can you tell us who you think might need to be one of your patients on an episode of Botch, or at the very least, which franchise could use your Ooh. help? Rumor has it that he has had so much plastic surgery on this season of Box that he's actually applying to be the new housewife on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. <laughs> Whatever it is, it's working. We, we think they all look great. Good answer. And we're here for any of them if they ever need us. Okay, all right. There you go. Now that we're ending we're, the- We're gonna be very, we're, we're gonna be Switzerland here on this. That's smart. And Too by the way, there is no other bromance that's nothing. We are the best in the world. This is the best bromance. I don't know. You, you, guys gotta stick or, you guys gotta stick around and listen to me and Al because we're a close second. Yes. <laughs> we're a close second. We're your apprentices. Oh. <laughs> All right, guys, let me get to my question. You know, the pandemic, we're coming out. The masks are slowly starting to come off. People are getting a good look at themselves in the mirror. What's a popular treatment that people are getting right now? You know, everyone's looking at Zoom. Everyone's looking at their face, so I gotta tell you, we're seeing a big influx because we do first time surgery of the face, a lot of upper eyelid surgeries, a lot of neck lift, a lot of faceless because of tech neck, staring down all the time. Oh. So we're seeing a lot of that, especially everyone's leaving the house. More Botox, more fillers, more into our spas. It's happening everywhere. That's cool. Well, it's good to see people taking care of us, taking care of themselves. Now, Dr. Nassif, I got to ask you a question. Now, a lot of people want to look like their favorite celebrities, of course. But is there one celebrity that people most want to look like or like traits of celebrities that people most want, like Kim's butt or what? Roger Federer's calves? Oh, you don't think people want that, Sam? I didn't expect that from you. <laughs> <laughs> well, look at that. Look at that. those are great calves. Actually, I have calves just like that. I will tell you, five, six years ago, we had a lot of those inquiries. Now what's happening is, in our mind, we feel that everyone is using all the filters Ooh. and making their own changes, Ooh. coming to our offices and saying, can you make this? What? So make my nose like this, make my cheeks like this. And actually, sometimes, sometimes it's valid. Other times, it's called selfie dysmorphia. Mm. I'm personally not seeing a lot of 
patients come in with different celebrities' uh, body parts. Anymore. I see them say, I don't want to look like this celebrity body part now. Oh. What are you drinking? It's like bright blue. I got to drink a, a gallon of this every day. That's again why, you know, I look so good in felt. I lost about a good 20 He's pounds. had so much what plastic surgery, he's aging in reverse. <laughs> That's okay. water. It looked Down like a water. potion. Well, Sam, they, they're able to color the bottle. Well, it looks like a potion. And water takes the color of whatever oh. it's in. <laughs> he's such a, I won't even use that. <laughs> <laughs> you guys can probably spot a botched job from a mile away, but for the folks at home, what are some telltale signs of when the basics go wrong, like bad Botox, bad fillers? First of all, if it doesn't look like it exists in nature, mm. it doesn't. That's a sign that something is wrong. Also, if there's a spaceship in the back parking lot, it means they flew in from another planet. It's not natural <laughs> plastic surgery. Look, good plastic surgery is invisible, right? You shouldn't be able to see, you know, a syringe hanging off the side of the face <laughs> or a scalp. Well, in this case, obviously you can see a little bit of it, but you know, it should just look totally natural. I love look it. Look at his face after he said, yep. listen, we're gonna get back to the bromance a little bit. What do you guys, what really gets on your nerves about each other? I know you guys crack jokes on TV. We all see it. We love the relationship, but what really irks you about each other? Well, but before we answer, I want to say something. This is not on TV. This is 24 hours a day for mm. 21 years. <laughs> this guy will text me in the middle of the night on something stupid insulting me. It's always <laughs> been like that. So, I mean, it never stops. Right. To, stop. to answer your question, it's the constant judging. It's right. the constant, oh, do I need a little more of this? Uh-oh, there is a wrinkle that has invaded my forehead. Emergent Botox, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> that. The, the honesty, though, is what makes so you guys, guys great. Yeah. Well, well, I mean, I don't know about your relationship, oh. but uh, the thing that makes... Uh-oh. Oh, we razz it's, it's, one I another? guess the big question I have... Oh, I used to sit next to Jeff, yeah. and because of the pandemic, they've separated us. But Jeff used to eat a banana daily, and let me tell you, the, the noise that would come from you smacking on a banana <laughs> used to... <laughs> Irk me. Luckily, we're out of time. Okay. <laughs> Since we're going there, there might be a little odor issue after eating with this <laughs> one. <laughs> we understand. He took it a step further. Yeah, he did. And believe me, Jeff has a laundry list of things that bug him about me. So thank you, Doctors Nassif and Dubrow. We adore you guys. Thanks for being here today. Make sure, DBL Nation, to check out the new season of Botched on E. We'll be right back. Promotional consideration is brought to you by... to DBL. I'm Stephanie Jones with the week's top style and trending news. Let's find out more in Fashion Fix. This trend was once considered controversial. Now it's one of this spring's signature styles and my what the fashion moment of the week. And this
to DBL. When it comes to your home insurance, having the right plan is so important. Policies cover so much more than you think. We're sharing some surprising things in today's Bang for Your Buck presented by the Hartford. First, car theft. If your car is broken into and something is stolen, your homeowner's policy actually covers the loss, not your auto insurance. Wow. I did not know that. Next up, collections. If something is stolen from your home that's a part of a set, your entire collection may be covered. I don't know why there's a bear. Lastly, wild animals. <laughs> I'm now on board. Yes, some policies will cover damage caused by lions, tigers, and bears if you live in an area prone to wildlife. It's all about finding the best policy for you. We've made it easy when it comes to quality and affordable insurance. The Bucks got your back. The Hartford will be happy to provide you solutions. So call the Hartford at 1-800-684-6085 or visit thehartford.com. Sorry, before you get to the comment, I'm just going to say a lot of people might look at the lions and tigers and be like, oh, it's ridiculous. That must be out it's there. It's real, though. My, my girl's aunt lives in Golden and every morning sends her pictures of like moose, like huh? real animals. And really? that's 30 minutes away from here. So wow. we're encroaching on them, not the yes. other way around. All right. DBL's new every day. We'll see you same time, same place tomorrow. Bye, guys.